It's the moment of truth. I tell you what, I'm gonna fail the kick up because I'm so cold. <laughs> oh no, you got loads of room. Yeah. Yeah, like loads. Royce officially made it this morning. He had a uh, pop custom made of him, a little action figure. Has the abs just yeah. and has the shorts. And as it's going to be Royce Dunn leading the way, 1,255 pounds for a back squat, a press, and a deadlift. What a dude. Had to get it, get it here now. Need to buy it off him. Yeah. I want one. I'm jealous. What a demand production. Yeah. <laughs> Australian's newest action figure. Yeah. <laughs> You've heard of action, man. Here's Royce, man. <laughs> Dancing. Look at that mobility. I actually, uh, this morning I actually tried like the bag because when you hug the bag, it's like its own belt. And speaking to all the physios, they're like, front squats is the first thing you want to introduce back into your training just because the center of gravity and the core work that it brings in. Started on this bag and it felt good. So then we're going to do the 65 bag, 300 cal bike. And then every two minutes, 10 sandbag squats. Starting with the sandbag squats. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're halfway back. Yeah, it started from the bottom now, we're still near there, but uh, we're off it. Alright. When you when you warm up. He's <laughs> leading the warm up. Jumping jacks. Yep. Hit or as he calls them, jumps. <laughs> Here's a dad joke. My child this morning said, uh, can you pass me the bookmark? I broke into tears. It's been 11 years and he still doesn't know my name's Phil. <laughs> That's a good one, I like that one. <laughs> You're not very prepared for this workout. I wasn't prepared at I did four rounds with the pig bag, yeah. and then my back started to twinge. It was just not conditioned, so this is fine. He's practicing for American Idol. Oh. Okay. 21.41. My legs are not ready for those squats. Two months without really squatting. You feel like you haven't squatted for two years. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. From the fourth round in, the bag felt good. But then as I was starting to get a bit tired, I was getting a bit looser. And so I could feel the twinge starting to come back in and I just dropped the bag and it was fine from then on. So it's good. A little bit slowly adding stuff back in. Not going too crazy, just making it happen. He's been stuck in this plane of motion for about three months. <laughs> it's like a glitch in a video game. I'm getting so I'm pressing X, but it's just, he's not moving around. So Hurts my soul a little bit, but I couldn't be bothered to put my shoes on just then. Anyway, today we're going on a road trip. It's an adventure. It's like an hour and a half of driving through the Australian kangaroos. Because we are going to go look at something that you may not know and we've never seen, but it's exciting. Whoa. Very excited. Very excited. It's great. Great! I like you. It is like an oven in here. That was so, that was the worst Australian I've done yet. The language is taking a little bit to, uh, still trying to learn the language to. Right it's not a real road trip yet. Oh, now it is. <laughs> now it is. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh my god, it's got a little duck. Oh, the They've all got little the ducks. They've all got little ducks. Oh, look at them. Got little... Uh oh, he's got a cow. <gasps> no. Dad, the away. Sorry. Oh, no. Look how fluffy you are. Oh, 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 oh. You're a pony with a haircut. 
Look at that haircut. guys would like. I didn't know, I didn't want to tell you about the little Shetland trainings. <laughs> just in case they weren't there. Cause like they are wild. And so, but we just keep them there. Are they really wild? Yeah. Well, they were real friendly. Oh, they're so curious, but they actually nip you. And I was like, oh Jazz, be careful. Oh, no. We're in the Australian outback with Tia Farmer Toomey. Tia Farmer Toomey. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Thank my you humble for having us. Hold on. This is where you grew up. Yeah. This is where you. No one's ever got been fit. here before. Well, this you just is, ran this around is where the fields. I, yeah, I would run around barefoot, and you know, the, oh, this is where Feral Tear used to live. <laughs> but now reminds me of the wild thornberries. You know, the, the child of the wild thornberries. Oh, Wait, this it? house. This never used to exist in this house. No, I literally. Uh, this is where I was just saying. Yeah. So this from here. So no bedrooms, no bathrooms. Well, hang on, no, no, no. I had two, two bedrooms, and here, that's where I grew up with, they with my family. Kitchen, this tiny little area right here, that used to be my bedroom. Wow. And you'd look out here, and now my nana lives all here by herself, and then, then that's what I'd look out onto. Pop used to live. Oh, wow, yeah, it just keeps going on and on. Yeah, it's crazy. What is this? So this is where my pop used to live. And uh, this is the longest house in the world. A years ago, but this is like our, my surfboards there. Um, you know, like all my stuff is like there. And Shane and I was like stay here when we're here, but all of our stuff is like in a container and all packed up. This is big news. What's that? So that there, Dad's gonna build a big shed. And I'm gonna deck it out with all road gear and stuff, and then I can come here and train here, and yeah, I have a place. It'll be to train. better than Rich's barn. You know it. <laughs> Sorry, Rich. <laughs> but yeah, so we can like swim and do workouts, and yeah, like it's it's just awesome. It's like it, this is like ideal place to train. Yeah. It, once that's all set up. Yeah, it's, and it's got two little horses. Pardon? Two little wild ponies. <laughs> Did you see the cows though? Yeah. Yeah. You're like, friends. I don't care. I can't even see where I'm pouring now. Wait. Busted. Busted. My nana, my nana said to serve this. <laughs> I don't encourage this. Look at my dirty feet. Where is Shane? Shane is currently going and um, at a course to get his motorbike license. Because he. He's getting prepared for his midlife crisis when he wants to buy a Harley. <laughs> then we had like a truck, well, it was like a vintage car truck thing where we had like kegs of beer and spirits and oh, stuff on tap that yeah, people yeah. could just go and serve and they would just like serve themselves. So it was really cool. And dad um, drove the boat up and I arrived out on the deck there. And by that time, everyone kind of knew, but when they rocked up, Shane was like in casual clothes, like, oh, hey guys, what's going on? And we had to tell mom and my sisters so that they could help Shane put out the, um, put out the chairs for everyone to sit down on. And then Shane had to quickly race upstairs to like get his suit on and everything. And mom's like trying to put his like um, nice little um, flower and yeah. thing yeah. in there. To his auntie came, Lisa came, and I was sitting around there hiding. And she <laughs> said, look, at, I said, what are they putting all those white chairs there for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, as if we didn't know it. And I was like, you didn't. <laughs> Tia surprised all of her friends. Her, her wedding was a surprise and they did it right here out the back of their old house. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty special. It was, it was the best oh, day of my life. Life. Pretty cool, eh, Jazz? So this is where you'll bring Matt Fraser for a month every year and show him how to do CrossFit even more than you already show him. Yeah, fingers crossed. I'll show him the Aussie way, hey? Yeah. <laughs>
because you're better than Matt. <laughs> I think he's going to protest against that one. <laughs> but you agree. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm no, not confirming or denying. <laughs> this is a story team that you would never have thought would happen. Every morning, you would come down here. Yeah. And you would take the boat over, the, you would take your own oh, little boat. Oh, yeah. Okay, so basically, um, the bus wouldn't come. So I have a, a kilometer long driveway, but the bus wouldn't actually stop at the start of my driveway. So there was a bus route across the river where uh, I could go and catch, but I had to actually get over there. So my parents, they um, had a tiny little boat that I kept down the um, creek just over there. So every morning I'd run down, go get the boat, come here, pick up my little sister who was just in preschool at the time and then we would take it over to the another jetty which we knew those people there are old um, cane growers over there they were very close with the family and they allowed me to pull the boat up and hide it so no one would steal it during the day and we would walk up onto their um, driveway and go and catch the bus to school so tia used to ride a boat yep. to get a bus to go to school yeah That was super cool. So, Tia's mum and dad used to grow sugar cane, like in the fields surrounding that property. So that's why Tia was there and kind of grew up there. Wow. That's really cool. She says that very few people have ever been there. Like she very rarely takes anybody there. So thank you Team, very much. Feel privileged and smash that like button. That's really awesome. Destroy the like button. Make the like button. You can't say that. And then she was saying apparently the mill kind of shut down or whatever and then they had to move up north to the mines and then that's where Tia met Shane. So without the sugarcane industry slowing down a little bit, Tia wouldn't have ne would never have found Shane and the love story and the banter and the sick content that you receive would not have been as sick. Yeah, it could have been Tia, Tia Claire Gloomy and Shane half awesome. Hmm. Aww.